Hi, welcome to this week's Whiteboard Wednesday. I'm David Maloney, Senior Security Researcher on the Metasploit team at Rapid7. Uh, and this week we're going to be talking about another mitigation technique, DEP, or Data Execution Prevention. So this is uh, not a very new uh, mitigation technique. It first uh, was created as something called NX or no execute, which was set on processors, uh, and eventually evolved into the technique that we now refer to as DEP. DEP is all about the separation of data and code. So typically speaking, when a program runs on a computer, there is no difference to the computer between data and code. It's just where it finds it determines how it treats uh, the bytes of data that it's seeing. So for example, you can have the exact same data uh, represented as capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D as a string. And if you see that on the stack, the program is going to choose to interpret that as the string A, B, C, D. However, if you see that in the section of memory reserved for executable code, those same exact bytes translate into four, uh, four different instructions. Increment the ECX register, increment EDX register, increment EBX register, and increment ESP. So when we talked about before when we would uh, modify the stack in one of our exploits, uh, that, same that same data that we were sending was first interpreted as data, usually as a string, so your ABCD, and then when we change the execution, it's then uh, interpreted instead as a set of instructions. So if you look at it uh, in the case of our structured exception handler overwrite here again, uh, this is what our stack looks like before we run our exploit with our structured exception handler record here, our stack cookie, our saved return pointer. And we overflow this buffer by sending a bunch of data. And the stack ends up looking something like this, where we have our shell code, the NSEH record is a, a series of instructions that are going to be interpreted as jump back. But at the time that we're feeding it, it's just a, a set of regular data, probably various characters. And the same thing with the pointer to our pop pop return uh, instruction. And then just a bunch of junk to create the, um, the exception that will trigger our exploit. So all of this is interpreted when you send it as probably a string or other, some other form of data. But what happens when our, exception, when our exception hits and it goes to here and interprets this as a pointer and goes to that pop pop return instruction, which leads us right back to here and tells the program that the next place you should be executing from is right here and this, that this is code. So the data has now become interpreted as instructions like we saw up here. And this is usually a set of instructions to tell the execution to then even jump back even further and land at the top of our shell code and start executing all the rest of this data as a series of instructions. Now, what DEP and NX uh, set out to do is establish a proper boundary between data and code and say that when something, for example, is on the stack, it should always be treated as data and never interpreted as a set of instructions. And the way, this, uh, the way it does this is by maintaining permissions on sections of memory. So you, just like you have on a file, you have three basic permissions, read, write, and execute. So by default, the stack is set for read and write permission, but is set to not be executable. So what DEP, all DEP really does is say that if that executable permission is not set on that section of memory, then it may not be run as code. So that prevents us, so with, in a situation with DEP, you'd hit this pointer to a pop pop return, and it would try to return into this, uh, into this instruction here, and it would not be executable and would actually trigger another exception and ca eventually cause the program to crash, or at least for the thread that it's running in to die. So this is how data execution prevention, uh, or DEP, uh, prevents those same basic uh, buffer overflow exploit techniques that we saw in some of the previous videos. Stay with us uh, for over the next couple of weeks. We're going to also be talking about how you can bypass DEP. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.